Well, welcome everyone to the fourth and final round of the inaugural Route 66 Sim Championship here at Virtual Road America. A race championship that has seen us come to four different tracks across the U.S., starting things off at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, then heading to Road Atlanta, Daytona International Speedway, and now Road America. We are excited to kick things off and end things for the inaugural Sim Championship season. My name is Nadine. Alongside me, Eli Carter and Taylor Burris on cameras tonight. Eli, four races was this championship. We are in the fourth one. It's a short and condensed season where not a lot of mistakes uh, are allowed. And now one final race to determine who's going to get this inaugural championship. Eli, first, how are you doing? And you excited for tonight? As always, these races have been a lot of fun to watch. A lot of good battles, a lot, also a lot of tire management stuff. But yeah, so I'm excited for tonight, doing pretty well. Uh, yeah, it'll be fun to watch. Elkhart Lake, Road America, usually pretty entertaining track. Just a lot of, a lot of drafting down the long straightaways, but these turns can be very, very tight and very treacherous to pass on. Yeah, and it is still a very difficult track to get right, especially with really trusting the car and trusting that the downforce will be there as we're watching on uh, Adam Preppen, who just recently got his, one of his first major national wins at the United States Pro Kart Series down at Speed Sports Racing Park in Texas. The 437 driver making his way into turn five and six past the Corvette 
Ridge for him. Adam Kreppen, uh, of course, the K100 Masters champion last year for Route 66 competition, uh, winning all four races and winning the Road America round, and hopefully going to want to win this virtual Road America round tonight. Eli, it's a bit of a difficult track, like we were saying. Yes, there's a lot of long straightaways, but with uh, the how the characteristics of the surface are and the low downforce of this track, just try and walk us through a couple of the uh, excuse me, a couple of the challenges they're going to be experiencing tonight. Oh yeah, a lot of slidiness. Um, we're doing a, a couple practice laps, and I'm, yeah, very slidey. And you don't know where you can break. A lot of these turns you can get in really deep, but then your exit's going to be horrible. So the best thing to do is find that sweet spot, see where you can just carry the momentum. Um, these cars very, very dependent on momentum, as we have seen, because the tires, they don't really stick that well. If you, if you go in a little bit too deep, you'll easily just go straight. So it'll be a fun, fun race to watch. Um, it'll be kind of interesting to see where everyone breaks and who, who's... Uh, who's good at what point of the track for that long carousel, which will not be easy on tires. And, and like I said earlier, we have those long straightaways, so it'll be fun for draft. Um, but yeah, as, as always, we got some, we'll have some very, a lot of tire work, excuse me, a lot of tire work. Yeah, we should be expecting a fair amount of tire wear, a bit of a rough surface here at Road America's watching, I believe that's Christopher Yotzi go for a bit of a spin there uh, in the background of Caleb Patry's shot. Caleb has been very, very quick so far uh, in the practice session yesterday. He was quickest of the drivers that competed there. Now he is a, hasn't set a lap time yet. Uh, no one really has, so we're waiting for those first lap times again. Uh, it's about a 1 minute 58, 1 minute 57. They'll be looking for full position for these drivers. Quickest in practice, I believe, was Cadence Presley of 157. A few drivers get into that 1 minute 57 bracket, so we're going to wait for uh, drivers to make their way across the line for the first time. There is Cadence Presley, who was uh, in race winning contention last time out at Daytona International Speedway. Been a wreck for him in the infield section. Saw his day done, but Austin Fairfield, the first across the lines, 158.4 for the NPG Motorsports mechanic and racer out of White Lovers White Park. Kids Presley talking the lap time he would have wanted on his opening round, uh, 58.94. The MPG Motorsports driver of Austin Fairfield is one we haven't talked about up front as much, so hopefully we'll be able to see him and talk about him more throughout the night and hoping for a good race for him. A lot of the MPG Motorsports drivers who have competed in this uh, series so far, that being Fairfield, Olds, uh, Liberante, and Chase Jones haven't had the days they would have wanted. So hopefully we'll see an MPG Motorsports driver out in front. Eli Warren, though, another driver who just has come home from the United States Pro Kart Series, puts its second fastest at the moment. It's a 58.4 for Eli Warren, just with some traffic in front of him that should be able to help him out in terms of the draft. And uh, Kids Presley still behind him in third. Luke Powers and Greg Rudder and Shane Reddy with many drivers, too, have set a lap with Austin Fairfield still out in front. As we say that, Caleb Patry, 58.3 for Caleb on the 598 car. He goes fastest of anyone uh, about six minutes into this qualifying session, but Eli's still 14 minutes to go as he makes his way into turn three. What are some of the key corners, you think, Eli, that will be uh, key to get a good time here to extract the lap time out of one of the longest road courses in North America? Uh, turn one's a very difficult corner here. It's very flowing, very fast, but there's very little runoff in iRacing. So that'll be a very fun corner watch. Uh, same thing with turn two, very tight, a little bit slower though, but that leads up for that long back straightaway, going into a heavy braking zone. So there'll be a ton of draft. Going into turn five, really, really tight turn. A little bit of runoff on the exit, but with these cars, they kind of bottom out a little bit. Then you go up into the Corvette um, bridge, I believe. Um, you go up there. Another tight turn. It'll be a little bit interesting on the brakes there. 
Um, then through the kink in turn seven, always a fun corner to watch. A little bit of a lift maybe throughout the race. And then turn eight, pretty good passing zone. You know, got a little bit of a straightaway. It's a nice flow and turn and a little bit of runoff. Then you have the long carousel. That'll be a fun turn to watch. See all the different lines through there. And that'll be very hard on tires, so I bet you will see someone spin off at least once going through there. Then you have the actual kink. The kink is always fun. You usually see someone go off, so hopefully if they do, just they keep it off in the grass and by the wall. The kink the corner. Probably one of the most famous corners here in America. It's a fun corner. It's got some uh, runoff on the exit, but it, like I said earlier, huge straightaway after a kink. So if you get that kink wrong, you're going to have a ton of people on. Um, drafted down that straightaway so we'll definitely see a couple passes then up through 13 and then through the final turn it's a flat turn you want to use as much curb on that inside and use all that runoff on the exit and that leads you back up that huge hill which we'll definitely see some passes on yeah, absolutely just giving us a bit of a rundown on the track so far on board with charlie steins at the moment steins uh don't believe he has set a lap time thus far. Last lap for him was a 1 minute 58.6, though. So if he can keep that up, that should be around the Eli Warren and Luke Powers area of about 6th or 7th as he goes under the Johnsonville Speedville Bridge that has seen some renovations in the past couple of years. Yeah, you can see losing the rear end a bit, a little bit there, but pulling that car to a stop, probably not happy with that lap time. Cadence Presley, though, who we watch now, is fastest at the moment. He is the one of three drivers, that is, to break into the 1 minute 57 brackets of 1 minute 57.922 for Cadence Presley. The other drivers, Reed Sweeney and Kayla Patry, who are both very, very close to Cadence Presley's time. So, uh, fairly compact field thus far for these drivers and hopefully we see some very very close racing but Eli I listening to you walk through the track it's really going to come down to how confident are you in the car I know we've talked about that a lot throughout the season but here more than other places the braking is kind of hard to get right in this Delara Formula 3 and then the downforce you have to really trust it even though we're on pretty low wings here for Road America, so the likes of getting it stopped in a turn one. Turn three can be very, very tricky with it being downhill, slightly off camber when on entry. And the likes of turn five, eight, camber corner, 14, even the final corner of the track with it, you having to turn a little bit while braking. It's a very difficult time and some drivers find it a bit unsuspecting of how difficult it is to hook up a lap around here, but Keynes Presley still out on track at the moment. Reed Sweeney just nine thousandths of a second behind, and Patry uh, half a tenth behind him, so out in front, very, very close. Eli, we see this man on screen, Reed Sweeney, who swept the last two races, taking the win at Road Atlanta and Daytona International Speedway, finished on the podium at Indianapolis Motor Speedway after having to go from the back to the front after him having some issues in the pre-final. You have to think, Eli, that Reed Sweeney is going to be one of the drivers to watch tonight for the win. Oh, yeah, he definitely will be. He's been very consistent. I don't know what his game plan is. I don't know if he just wants to get that win or if he really wants to take home that, uh, that, that championship. But... I don't, I don't know the current point situation off the top of my head, but it'll be fun to see him. You know he'll definitely go for the win, but I bet you Cadence Presley will definitely also want that. I'm pretty sure he was the one that was in the top three last week and, it got, and they got in that wreck as there goes Reed Sweeney up to the top now by a tenth and a half. Jeez, he's definitely uh, picking up some time here. And he'll, be, uh, he'll be fun to watch. Yeah, you were talking about Reed Sweeney's game plan. It's, it's certainly showing itself. A 57.7 for him, very, very quick time. Almost a tenth and a half clear of Cadence Presley, who said he was fairly confident last time out coming into this round. So we'll have to see if he'll be able to keep up with Reed Sweeney this time. Sweeney doing a Verstappen-like performance last time at Daytona, really just gapping the rest of the field and staying out of drafting distance throughout the entire thing as he makes his way into the carousel. Under the Johnsonville Bridge, that's turn nine is the first half of it. Then on exit, it's considered turn 10 as he'll head into the kink. Uh, Eli, we talked about it a little bit when you were talking about your uh, track guide there. 
if you're behind someone going through the kink and you get a little bit of dirty air, it's not uncommon to see someone go into the wall and drivers left there. We see it in sports car racing all the time. It's a hard impact, hopefully, thankfully, uh, just virtual impacts this time, so no one is going to get seriously hurt there. But it, it could be a bit of a trouble spot, couldn't it? Oh, yeah, it definitely could be that. The kink, or sorry, the carousel is always a very, very interesting corner uh, to watch. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Oh, no, you're talking about the kink. My bad. Yeah, <laughs> same thing, though. It'll be it's a fun same corner. Complex watch. Of yeah, yeah. yeah, you're fine. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Um, very interesting to watch. So, yeah, it'll be. It'll be interesting to see who does what. That leader, the leader definitely at this track. Other than the long straightaways, they will definitely be sitting in, a, in the best position. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at the Colin Beasley and the Powers on track, trying to use the draft to their full effect. These two and Eli Warren work pretty well together uh, throughout any of the Sin E-Series that they have run over the winter, whether it be us at Route 66 or stars in their choosing of E-Series. But Von Beasley at the moment, he is fourth fastest. I believe he only ran Indianapolis Motor Speedway with us, so he won't be in championship contention, but he certainly will be going for race wins, Will Von Beasley is. We'll keep watching him as he goes down kettle bottoms into Canada Corner. Again, hard braking, use a little bit of the exit curves of both momentum. Very, very light is the Formula 3, but it comes with a very low horsepower, about 240, 250 horsepower for these Dallara F3 17s. As Beasley rounds the final corner, a little bit of an off track there. I don't know if this lap will count for him, but coming up and over the bridge, past to America straight the start finish line. It's second fastest for Von Beasley, a 57.8 for him, and that's half a tenth away from Reed Sweeney. Gaines Presley down to third now. Caleb Patriot, Max Kraus into fifth, a really good qualifying for him so far. It's a 58.3 for Kraus, but Von Beasley, Eli, could be one to watch throughout tonight. Uh, same with Cadence Presley, Caleb Patry, Max Kraus for the back of the field, Eli Warren, Jordan Bachmeyer, Luke Powers. Those guys have been quick throughout the season. You had to pick a couple of drivers to look at, maybe not just a winner, but who's your eye on tonight? I don't know. It's hard to say right now. That top four, they're all under two tenths here just in qualifying. So like we saw last week, they'll be fun to watch. I don't know, though. I feel like, I feel like Max... Max Krause just sitting on the edge there, top five. Feel like he'll be able to make his way in, but you always got to look at the regulars. As, as Adam Krepp, and I was, uh, I was just going to say, he's up into the top ten now in the eighth place there. So, I mean, I think... I... It's a little bit of internet issues for Eli, so get that sorted. Apologies for that. Still looking at Von Beasley at the moment, who is second fastest. He's trying to improve his time to Pip Reed Sweeney, but at the moment it is a front row start for Von Beasley as things stand. Uh, not a whole lot of change throughout the field. Everything's been seen fairly consistent throughout the qualifying thus far. We have about four minutes and 30-ish seconds left in this qualifying session, so we'll bring you to the end of that. Just a couple more laps for these drivers. Uh, like we said, it, the lap time ranges from front of the field to back of the field from a 57.7 to a 2 minute 7, so about 3-4 seconds separating them. Uh, but out front though, Reed Sweeney still holding that 57.7. We're watching him now. Uh, that's Carson Sauter. Again, Reed Sweeney and Carson Sauter have the exact same paint scheme, so it's going to be a little difficult uh, to differentiate those two. Carson further down the field for the 928 as he goes for a little bit of a spin. You can see Max Krause, the 314, having to take a base of action. Same with Quinton McPherson as there is Max Krause there. Uh, this is Quinta McPherson we're watching now, the Rolson Performance Group and Millwright Driver, who came second in the B-Main and K100 Senior Competition for the United States Pro Car Series, his fastest lap, 59.4 for McPherson. 
who at the moment that will put him 13th just outside of the top 10. McPherson has had some moments of uh, pace and brilliance for him throughout the season, but has never been able to really put a race together for the man who finds himself 1.6 seconds back from Reed Sweeney. Championship points leader Reed Sweeney, if he continues on this trajectory, uh, that should be the championship. Reed, as here is Reed Sweeney now going into turn three for him. Very difficult corner to get right is turn three and then turn four. And moving ahead of him, excuse me. Difficulties on my end, too. Um, Turn five, really, really difficult to get right downhill. It's a little uh, difficult to get under braking, like we see there, but I think that's Reed just bowing out of a lap. Looking back to Vaughn Beasley, who is two and a half tenths back from Reed Sweeney, that it says on the ticker there, using all of the exit curve on uh, turn 12 at Canada Corner. Turn 13, this is a hard one to get right. You don't want to use too much of the exit because it's very, very easy to find yourself uh, off track like Vaughn almost did there. He's on the ragged edge of this Formula 3 at the moment. Going across the line, Ken Beasley and crew. Uh, not enough to pip Reed Sweeney, who Sweeney has improved his time. It's a 57-5 for Reed Sweeney, so that is two and a half tenths better than Vaughn Beasley and much, much more than the rest of the field. with just a minute and a half to go for this field. Not a whole lot of change throughout it. Just drivers starting to uh, improve their times just half a tenth by half a tenth or thereabouts. Not a whole lot of movement as we look at Jordan Bachmeyer, the 915 driver out of Minnesota who has been competitive for pretty much every race that he's competed in this season, especially at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But this lap's not going to count. Just went way too wide in turn one and finds that car stopped in the little kink that they call turn two here at Road America. So unfortunate for him. One minute to go in qualifying for the final round of the season. Luke Powers making his way out of turn 12. Cam in the corner there. Try not to draw the tire out of 13. Again, just a very, very easy mistake for these drivers to make. But in these Formula 3 cars, it should be fairly easy for them to keep all four on the road. Out of the final corner goes Luke Powers, who currently finds himself on that 955 part in 11th. So he'll be coming to the line. He wants to be a 58.9. He's not going to be able to do that. It's a 591 for Luke Powers. He's going to pull over and call qualifying good for there. There's a lot of drivers you can see there in the pits. Uh, Nathan Trapp, who got inside the top five for the first time this season, last lap at Daytona International Speedway. Last lap for him, two minute three, not good enough to improve from his one minute 59.428. And that will be Qualifying done. Reed Sweeney, 20 points to him. And pole position, Von Beasley will be right alongside him as we get a good look at uh, the track we're a lot more used to in Route 66 competition, the karting track there in Sim. Cool to see that, but we're not racing on that. Racing on the big track, the four-miler for tonight is we'll be looking at the starting grid. Reed Sweeney once again on pole position with Von Beasley alongside him. Big pole gap between those two. Dave Presley and Caleb Patry find themselves on row two of the starting grid. Moving on to row three, it's Austin Fairfield. And how about that from Max Krause, the 314, the 206 junior driver from us, doing a very, very good job in qualifying indeed. On to row four and starting at seventh in eighth of Eli Warren and Adam Kreppen. Both of those drivers running at USPKS last weekend. Both of them know they have more pace in the car than they showed in qualifying, so they're going to hope for a better run around this time. Moving back to the final drivers inside the top 10. Jordan Bachmeyer and Carson Sauter. 
We said the final two drivers in the top 10, the 2K100 senior drivers from Route 66 competition, find themselves on the fifth row together as we get a good shot of Barney the Flag Man looking down upon his grid for what will be a seven lap heat one pre-final event. Luke Powers and Nathan Trapp find themselves alongside each other. Uh, Luke Powers hasn't been too quick in qualifying throughout this season. Hopefully we'll be able to make that up in the race. Quentin McPherson and Travis Yotze, uh, both winners in the 2023 season for Route 66 competition, find themselves starting alongside each other as we work our way further down the grid for this final night. Brian Rudder and Charlie Steins will line up alongside each other further back in the grid than they probably would have wanted for tonight and then Shane Reddy the final car on the grid here tonight as they get rolling for what will be a fairly long pace lap uh, indeed for these guys a very very long circuit is Road America let's get we'll going starting to warm the tires trying to get all the temperature they can into the handbook rubber that is on these Formula 3 cars. And I racing doing a very good job at uh, simulating the tire temperature of the entire carcass itself and building rubber and how you build rubber into that car. So uh, cool to see the level of detail they go into for that and the drivers using that to its full effect. Uh, some drivers trying opting for it early in the lap, others uh, opting to stay the Kimi Raikkonen back, that's what I'm trying to say, uh, from that video we saw back in 2017 where the entire field in Formula 1 is weaving and Kimi is, just has no straight. But trying to fill the airwaves a little bit with for what is a long pace lap is Christopher Yotze going for a bit of a half spin there. A little bit of issues further back in the field and we have one bar without a front nose cone. That can't be good for these drivers try and get an ID on who that is. I believe that might be Braden Rudder, who is starting this race without a front nose cone. So he'll probably have to dive into the pits earlier on in this one to get that repair and to be competitive. As you can see there, just unfortunate for him. And Quinton McPherson, no rear wing for McPherson. That is really going to hinder him throughout tonight. Very, very hard to keep that car underneath you if you don't have a rear wing. Then again, if we were at Monza or something, that could be a bit of a help, but unfortunately that's not going to help him at all tonight. The field about halfway through this pace lap to get things underway for the final time, the final pre-final of the season as the feature race in a couple in a little bit will be the final race of the 2024 Sam Championship season. Seen a bit of a replay there of Yotzi, excuse me, and the antics we saw out of turn four on the opening warm up lap for these guys. So not definitely not what you want to see uh, to start things off for the I believe, 20 drivers starting in this free final. You can see there, Reed Sweeney, Von Beasley ready to get things underway. Same with everyone else. A long time to think things through on this pace lap. What are you gonna do? What do you think your competitors are gonna do? Where do you place your car going into turn one? And for Reed Sweeney, when do I go? It's a very long Road America straight from 14 to one. He's gonna have to be very, very smart to figure out how to build that gap to Vaughn Beasley if he can. Again, the draft is going to be a huge, huge factor here tonight for all the 19 cars starting this race as they'll make their way into turn 12. Just a couple of corners left to go until we get things started for the final pre-final of the season. Reed Sweeney on the brink of trying to get championship and three race wins this season. Eli Warren, the only other driver to win, and that was back in Indianapolis Motor Speedway as the iRacing Porsche safety car will pull up into the pit lane. The final pre-final of the season is about to get underway as they crawl up the hill. Sweeney deciding to stay late. 
he will go. Green flag in the air tonight. And Sweeney holding the inside. We're white lining it already down at a turn one. Von Beasley is going to pull out. Same as Cadence Presley as they're going to go single file into turn one. Beasley off the track and he's going to lose positions to Caleb Patry and Cadence Presley. Uh, he'll stay in fourth. Max Krause holding a six but losing the position to Austin Fairfield down into four and five. Now Eli Warren is going to be trying to make up positions in this very short seven lap free final. Both of them dropping tires off the grass. That was a fair bit of blocking for both of them as Eli Warren going to go around the outside of Max Krause. But ladies and gentlemen, out in front of the lead change, it's not Reed Sweeney leading this series for once. The domination for at least half a lap has stopped. Cadence Presley out in front and leads, but for how long? Can the junior driver get it? Eddie goes around, three cars taken out. That's Sweeney out, that's Fairfield out. A whole heap of the front of the pack out of the race early after I think that was Presley just locking a rear tire. There you can see it again on the replay as a whole heap of drivers, unfortunate for them. But what is that going to do for the championship at this point? Cadence Presley has had to tell, uh, same with Austin Fairfield, same with Carson Sauter. I believe now that leaves Von Beasley out in front. Somehow, no damage for the 925 car, uh, who started off second, you can see there, now up to first, behind him on track, his old friend and teammate for Per Power Racing, I Warren. Right behind him is Max Krause, then Jordan Bachmeyer of all people, and Charlie Steins. We haven't talked about him too much this season. He's in the fifth. Reed Sweeney and Caleb Patry will pit this time. A very short seven laps to try and get things done. I don't know if they'll be able to uh, get those cars fixed as there are no fast repairs in this series. So it's going to be them starting from the back. Luke Powers also has had some internet connection issues, so he will be starting from the back in the final. But out in front, uh, Max Krauss is putting Eli Warren under pressure in the early stages of this race. We're only on lap two of seven here. But Vaughn Beasley out in front by 1.5 seconds for the senior driver. Max Krauss is really putting Eli Warren under pressure going into turn five here. It's a very, very difficult section of track, very slower, much more slower speed than the rest of the circuit. It suits some driver's style a bit more, as Max Krause obviously not liking it too much. He's falling a little bit back to Eli Warren behind, and I think Warren. Visibly, he looks like he's catching up to Beasley, but just on the time sheets, he's not. He's losing a bit of time to Vaughn in front about three tenths have been lost in the space of about one lap for Eli Warren. So unless he can figure something out in the next couple of laps, he's going to be waiting for the final to try and get something done, try and get the championship for Eli. It wasn't the best of rounds last time out in Daytona. Obviously with him not running at Road Atlanta. It could go either way between Sweeney and Eli Warren for the championship, but Daniel Dragunov on screen. He's been one of the drivers, but it is impressed with me. Uh, Carter in the booth. He's a sportsman driver who has found some fairly, some, I say fairly decent success, success, very good success uh, in the sportsman category at Cup Cards North America competition. I don't believe he ran with us uh, at Route 66 last year. We hope to see him. Uh, in the 206 Sportsman class because he is a very, very fun driver to watch racing up front and currently finds himself in seventh behind one of the older drivers in the field, Adam Kreppen. Bit of a disparity in age there between these two, running in sixth and seventh as Daniel Dragunov finds himself navigating turn three here at Road America. Not a lot of battling happening on track. At the moment, Max Krause has lost a bit of time to Eli Warren, but looking at Travis uh, Yossi, that's Christopher Yossi, a uh, bit of an racing name change 
issue there, so apologies for that, but he is closely followed by a fellow 206 Junior competitor, Shane Reddy. These two will definitely be racing each other on track in the real world uh, for the 2024 Route 66 Sprint Series season. Shane was very, very quick towards the latter half of the season and battling for race wins. Christopher Yotzi was our champion in the 206 Sportsman class. He moved up to junior competition at Tunnel Wright Raceway for the final race of the season. And we'll be seeing him in, I believe, K100 Junior and 206 Junior competition for 2024. So expect to see both of these guys battling on track on, on the virtual circuit as well. But further behind, Christopher Yossi, Nathan Trapp has caught up to Shane Reddy as we look at Max Kraus further up the field. He's running in podium contention. We switch back to the two Stockholm Party Center drivers of Trapp and Shane Reddy as Nathan Trapp makes his way past Shane Reddy and up into ninth place there for the two Minnesota drivers battling each other on track with the technical home race for them as Port America about six or seven hours away from where those two actually live in Minnesota. So, uh, out in front though, Reed Sweeney continuing to, excuse me, Vaughn Beasley continuing to lead the way. It's just been such a habit uh, saying Reed Sweeney out in front. Beasley leads the way of, out of Eli Warren and Max Krause as we continue to watch on the 324 of Shane Reddy making his way into turn one. A little bit of a different turn one than you might see in the real world. iRacing not having the complete up-to-date scan of Road America with all the runoff you see now in the turn of one complex. Looking now at the Braun GP livery, uh, Nathan Trapp, who is K100 senior driver who ran with Route 66 last season. Uh, didn't find the luck or pace he would have wanted last year, but he's finding it virtually here in eighth place currently for him. Now we get to five. Again, very, very difficult for him to get right for traps. Like we said, not a whole lot of on-track battling after that uh, collision for a lot of the front runners. Uh, Reed Sweeney has gone out, out on track, but he's down in 13th, really. Any position he can get to try and get to the front of the grid, he will take it. Max Krause is very, very, very aggressive as the junior driver ran about mid-pack or a little bit further back from the front in 206 Junior in the 66 competition last year. So very, very cool to see uh, Max finally in the virtual world and hanging in there with the driver who got two wins last year at Route 66, both at Newcastle, both in the senior divisions. Eli Warren doing the double in K100 Senior and 206 Senior. And Eli finding national success since then, winning a round of the Stars Championship Series at MCC. So, speaks volumes for the talent of Max Krause to be hanging in there with Eli Warren with just three laps to go for these drivers in the pre-final. Krause slowly losing the rear wing of Eli Warren, not really able to hold pace with Eli as he's starting to get a little bit of out of drafting range. Moving further back the field, we're going to take a look at Adam Krepping. Adam is currently running in fifth. That's Charlie Steins. You see just in front of him, just out of shot, and just on to the front left. That's going to pop uh, Krepping to move a little bit closer. He started eighth. He's up to fifth. Me uh, took full advantage of that wreck we saw at turn eight between Cadence Presley, Reed Sweeney, and a couple other drivers. So. Adam Kreppen finds himself in a good spot to start this main event in just a couple of laps time for the 437 Masters driver. We can see now Charlie Steins, the 288, make his way through the carousel, turn 10, keeping the car under him there, and dealing with the pressure that Adam Kreppen may be putting on him a couple seconds back. Charlie Steins looks pretty set to stay in that fourth position as he starts to blink a little bit there as more commentators curse. We see Reed Sweeney and Braden Rudder on screen now. Uh, both of these drivers not having a lot 
they would have won it in this free final grade runner has front wing damage on the opening lap and then uh, on the warm-up lap excuse me and it was reed sweeney on the opening lap who uh, found himself into the side pod of Kevin's presley so he's started from the back before at indianapolis motor speedway made his way up front to a podium so don't be surprised if we see reed Eleven to find himself racing for the win. Eli Carter, I think you have uh, sorted whatever technical demons that have been following you. Uh, it's ever since that turn one, that turn eight, excuse me, lap one crash, it's been fairly spread out. Uh, Reed Sweeney down in 11th, who we're watching here. You have to think he'll be able to work his way up in the finals. Ten laps, you think he'll be able to get himself in the podium contention. Yeah, I think so. Um, it'll just depend on the line right now. If the field really gets spread out right away, um, I assume it'll be hard to catch him or uh, catch up to the leaders. But I have no doubt he's been really fast um, for the last two weeks, uh, the last two race, races. So yeah, I think it'll be good. Uh, you want to give me a little bit more detail on what happened in uh, turn eight there? Not, not a, not a whole lot has happened apart from that turn eight. That's. The thing I think Caden Presley really just locked the rear end on these cars, and I think uh, the both of you, uh, both of us, excuse me, have driven the car enough to know it's just it's very very difficult to get the braking correct on these. It's it feels like getting to that sweet spot of not locking the front and not locking the rear is very hard to find, and unfortunately for Caden Presley, he just locked the rears in a really bad spot in leading the way. So unfortunate luck for him. There's a couple other cars got uh, caught up in that action. It's about two laps to go. Von Beasley would take the white flag this time by. He's currently three seconds in front of Eli Warren as Reed Sweeney continues to just do laps. He's currently finds himself in 10th now, so really, Eli, that's only nine cars you got to pass <laughs> at this point. He's making himself uh, his life easier for him. It was a smart move from him, to be fair, to just you know what, not the opening lap I wanted. I qualified up there, but you know, get back out on track, get some positions for the final. It's one less car. You have to figure out a way to get past in the main event. So kudos to him. Caleb Patriot also out on track who had the issues in turn eight. He is the car just in front of him and on camera now. Making his way into turn 13 as they're starting their final lap. Uh, in a couple of seconds here as they make their way out of 14 on the road of America straight. As, yeah, Eli, like we said, there hasn't been a lot of on-track battling this time. Everyone's really just uh, separated themselves throughout the seven laps. As Ronta Von Beasley now, who's built a 3.4 second gap to Eli Warren is very interesting to see the time difference between uh, Beasley and Warren throughout the carousel. It just seems like Beasley goes way, way deeper mid-apex in between 9 and 10 and builds a bit of a gap where Warren is more focused on the exit. So if those two find themselves in a race to Canada Corner in turn 12, you have a feeling that Eli Warren going out on that and how he sets up the carousel. But making his way through the penultimate corner and now the final corner. Von Beasley, for the first time this season, will see the checkered flag first. It's not the flag he wants to see first. It's the pre-final checkered flag. He'll be wanting to see the feature race checkered flag in a couple of moments' time. It's a win for Von Beasley. He'll definitely take that. He'll definitely take pole position and the points that come with that. Eli Warren, not too far behind. And then Max Krause, your top three for the pre-final. And then it's Adam Reppin and Charlie Steins, your top five. So running on a bit of a condensed field than what we ran in past races, 18 cars, but still uh, hopefully some very good racing in the 10 lap final just ahead of us once we get the rest of the field to cross the line. Eli, I think we were talking about a little bit pre-race of who we're looking at going into this one that both of us uh, thinking Reed Sweeney will be very competitive and he definitely will be quick which is starting for 10th this time is going to be really difficult for him to make his way through nine cars that 
really, when you look at him, it's a very high level of talents he's got to pass. Yeah, that's for sure. It'll be interesting to see how he does, um, where he makes his passes and how it goes for him. But, yeah, I, I think here it's just a little bit of a draft fest. Um, and it'll be fun to watch for sure. He definitely has a shot, like you were saying. Uh, but, yeah, it'll be difficult to get around some of these guys. Uh, good recovery, as it may, as it seemed like it was, but uh, it'll be a good recovery. Yeah, and, I mean, he started 30th in the final Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He finished on the podium. So if he can do 20 cars, then who says he can't do uh, less than 10 to get on to the top step of the podium? For the final race of the season. Quinta McPherson and uh, the Luke Powers, the final two drivers to cross the line. Luke Powers was uh, a driver with connectivity issues, so he had to disconnect and reconnect his locking up all fours there. And Quinta McPherson lost his rear wing on the warm-up lap for him. But Eli, it's the final race of this inaugural sim championship season. One more feature race ahead 10 laps to decide who's going to take the win for uh, this road america round and then we'll see who wins the championship later on as we calculate the points post race and post broadcast so we'll be announcing that on our socials later on and most likely next week but looking at the front row it will be vaughn beasley and eli warren starting things off uh, Max Kraus and Adam Kreppen behind, then Charlie Steins, Nathan Trapp, uh, Shane Reddy, Daniel Dragunov, Caleb Petrie, and Reed Sweeney make out the top 10. Eli, talking about a couple drivers that have impressed us, Max Kraus, who hasn't really been there on pace throughout the uh, entirety of the Sim Championship season, he started to show a little bit more of it. Uh, at Daytona, but for him to get a P3 finish is very, very good for him. And then how about Daniel Dragunov, who, for a sportsman driver, uh, is doing very, very good against the likes of some of the quickest uh, senior drivers in this race. You have to be very impressed with their showings. Yeah, that's always fun to watch. Um, good for them, too. That always shows that you, know, you always have speed, especially here in iRacing. You all have the same experience online, but... Yeah, it's always fun to battle against some older people. I know the feel about that. It's always fun to be able to be on the same level as them. You know, all right, I have the speed. Now I just got to figure out where to make my passes and what um, and what I need to get done. Yeah, and you always, I think a lot of drivers will uh, watch the lower category races if you're in our position of being seniors. Excuse me. Watch the junior races, the cadet races, and uh, wonder where they stack up against you in terms of pace and uh, doing the sim championship and doing online racing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it gives you the ability to do that. It gives you the ability to have seniors against juniors, against cadets, and against masters in the case of uh, Adam Kreppen also running. So having all four uh, categories of ages apart from kid carts who were uh, unfortunately excluded from the sim championship season. It's very very cool to see and just the mix of the drivers throughout the field it's not just the seniors and the juniors it is a mix up front of the have senior drivers you have junior drivers you have daniel dragonov who uh, has been doing very very good uh in this championship season he's progressed a lot from the opening couple of races for him so uh hoping for a good race for him for the rest of the field hoping for a really clean race uh, unlike we saw in Daytona for the uh, main event there. That's basically what we saw in the pre-final. So hopefully we got that out of our system so we can have a nice, clean uh, Mazda MX-5 style draft race for the final time this season. But Eli, looking at the field and the starting grid for the final race, who are you thinking uh, is going to take this one? Eli and Vaughn work very, very well together. You have to think they're going to try and maybe push each other, experiment with the bump drafting a little bit, but you have the likes of Adam Preppen, who's quick on his day. Uh, Reed Sweeney, like we were talking about, is going to be starting down at 10th, and maybe the likes of Shane Reddy or Quentin McPherson, uh, Christopher Yossi, who will be following behind Sweeney, might be able to work their, way, their ways through the field. Uh, that 
same way, but who you got? If you had to make a prediction, I know it's tough, but who, who would you pick for this final race of the season? I'm going to go with Adam Kreppen. You know, hasn't paid off yet, but I think it will. No reason it's not. So yeah, I'm going to go with Adam Kreppen. Uh, I don't know how I don't know how much practice he did for this race, but I have no doubt in my mind that he'll be able to he'll be able to make his smart moves, like you were saying. He's a he's a master driver, so you know, a little bit older, a little bit elder. You know, got that got that smart over the years. You know, he'll, he'll definitely be able to make his moves more smartly. Like you said, draft fest, so it could be anyone's game at this point. Yeah, well, might as well. I like, I like your pick for Greppen. He hasn't had the raw pace uh, throughout this season, but he's had the smarts, and he really he has kept his nose clean for the entire thing. If you, I don't know if you ask me, I feel like the front two are going to work together quite nice, so as long as they break away from Krause and Greppen, it's probably going to be the Eli Warren and the Von Beasley show who... Von Beasley goes early compared to what Reed Sweeney did for the final time this season. We go green at Road America. And again, white lining it on the pit wall. Single final all the way down until about Nathan Trappa. We have three wide battling for the lead between Dragunov, Shane Reddy, and Reed Sweeney. But it is Von Beasley who takes the lead. Daniel Dragunov off into the gravel already. So that's pretty much his race done and out of it. But Von Beasley continuing to lead after the first couple of corners side by side for Max Krause and Charlie Steins. Those two are battling for third. As you can see, Quinton McPherson off in the gravel in turn three as two drivers not having the starts they would have wanted. Battle for the lead, though. Von Beasley going a little bit defensive on Eli Warren as they make their way into turn five and six quickly after. But hopefully, I'm not going to say anything about how clean the start was because we saw a little bit of antics last time at turn eight. Uh, fairly clean first half of the lap for these guys, Eli. And it looks like Von Beasley and Eli Warren already have a gap. Oh, yeah, they're, they're definitely pulling away right now. And that's definitely what they both want to see. That's not what Max Krause wanted to see or Adam Kreppen or anyone in the back. That's not what you want to see ever. You want to make sure you always have a chance to get to them just with the draft. You never want to have to push your tires more than you need to. So this is a great thing for the front two, but everyone else behind them is just dreading and hope that they're going to make a mistake or start battling. Yeah, Max Krause already has Reed Sweeney, the 509, on his rear wing, and we're going to see potentially a pass into Canada corner. You can see them just come into camera shot there. He's going to be difficult to outbreak him, especially with Charlie Steins right there. They're going to be side by side on the apex, but there you see uh, Reed Sweeney getting past 4-4th and really just three more cars to pass to try and get the win tonight and a set of MG Red SH2s for the 509 driver. He has Charlie Steins to try and get past who Steins He's uh, been doing a lot of shifter racing competition as Steins, and now he will have Reed Sweeney coming to the rear wing of him. Sweeney deciding to go to the inside lane into turn one, gets the move done, and that is Sweeney already from 10th to a podium in one lap. But it's going to be difficult to chase down the front two as it's 2.1 seconds between Sweeney and the leader of Vaughn Beasley as Eli Warren in the draft of the leader, but he doesn't seem to be doing too much with it. More battling further back though, excuse me, Max Krause and Caleb Patry battling it out into turn five as Sweeney's gonna have to concede to, that is Charlie Steins side by side under the Corvette bridge. This is not at all gonna help Reed Sweeney's bid to try and get this race win. Sweeney gets in front into third and where did we see this before on lap one in the pre-final? Three cars going into turn eight. Heavily congested. Steins up the inside. That was never going to work for Charlie Steins. Bit of a lag out for him as he's going to have Caleb Patry all over his gearbox going through the carousel as Patry, Kraus, and Kreppen behind are going to have to be careful not to degrade those tires too much following in the dirty air of these guys. Uh, everyone really having pretty clean air for last race. So tire wear probably hasn't been seen the full extent of as Charlie Steins now has Caleb Patry on his outside. Patry trying to go the long way round at Canada Corner. It's hard to get done, but if he can stay on the inside into turn 13, he might be able to get it done, and he will. Charlie Steins having to concede that position 
but for how long? He looked to the inside there, but that's not going to help him out too much. Steins off the road, and now Max Kraus is going to have a go. Adam Kreppen and Nathan Trapp are both right there on him. Nathan Trapp has been one of the drivers who has improved a ton on pace throughout this season. He's going to make a move on Kreppen for a breast going into turn one. Kraus doesn't have the momentum on Steins. Nathan Trapp does on Kreppen move Trapp up a place into seventh. The man who got into the top five for the first time this season, last time out at Daytona, looks competitive, and he's in that fight to get into the top five yet again. Some great racing thus far, Eli, in the opening two laps as Nathan Trapp uh, looks to go for another move. Kraus looks to do it on Steins. We might have a three-wide battle going into turn five. Nathan Trapp, a little bit of contact. Trapp goes around. Steins breaks a rear wing. That's Charlie Steins going to be out of this race. A mistake from Nathan Trapp. The Trapp, excuse me, the Minnesota native uh, made a mistake there under braking, and now you can see Steins really going at the wheel and trying to hold that thing behind, but it might be a black flag or a meatball flag for Charlie Steins without a rear wing. Here's a replay. Nathan Trapp just gets into the rear of him. It's an unfortunate mistake for Nathan Trapp, who is running so well as... Yeah, looking at the live pictures, there goes Charlie Steins. If you had to pick a corner that he was going to lose it without a rear wing, you would probably be a fairly safe bet to put that on 9 and 10, the carousel, and that's exactly what happened there. Eli, a fairly chaotic and very fun opening uh, stanza to the race here as Max Krause and Adam Kreppen starting to go at it. But out in front, though, Eli Warren and Von Beasley continuing to work together. Eli, thoughts on the opening couple of laps of this race? It's been a bit of a crazy one. Yeah, it started off pretty easy, uh, but like you said, in that last couple laps, it's been getting more and more intense. Um, definitely Nathan Nathan Trapp just kind of trying to get all he can there. It probably locked him up a little bit, like you were saying a little bit earlier. That sweet spot on the brakes just locked them rears. You really need that rear brake here just to let the front car, the front of the car grip in. But it can definitely bite you if you have to get on those brakes hard. Um, Adam Kreppen losing some spots. Uh, Eli Warren and Von Beasley already have a two second, two and a half second gap here. They're working together. Eli keeps closing up to him, but it's he just doesn't seem to want to make that move. But uh, now that I look at it, Reed Sweeney, he's been fast. You know, he's been able to pull these gaps single car, so he definitely will have the speed to go for this front two as the leaders are battling a little bit. Vaughn had to block going down in turn five. Eli with no move, but a little bit wide there. Um, but yeah, Reed will definitely be catching. And I think Eli knows this. I think he needs to know that he needs to, he needs to get around Vaughn and just kind of go. He needs to get out of here, see what he can do and see if he can defend Reed when he gets to him. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at the times for last time around, Sweeney did a 57.6 and Eli Warren did a 58.0. So even without the front two battling like they did at the opening part of this lap, uh, Sweeney taking about four tenths of a second out of the leading duo out in front. So I think you're right, Eli. We're going to see a three car battle for the lead. It's down to 1.7 seconds between Sweeney and the leader of Vaughn Beasley. And I mean, Vaughn and Eli are friends. Those two are going to know that Eli Warren has a potential championship to clinch tonight. But it's going to take more than what they're doing at the moment. It's going to take more than a position swap at the end because Reed Sweeney has been so, so quick throughout this Sim Championship season. So they're going to have to hope for a bit of misfortune for the 509 for Eli to try and get that championship. But what can you say about Reed Sweeney, who's been so consistent throughout the entirety of these four races? And he is continuing to catch the front two, but not last time by is Nathan Trapp exiting the pits and giving the front runners a bit of a scare there. It was a 57.9 for Sweeney last time around. 58.5, I stand corrected. Sweeney is really catching these front two. And Eli, if you're Eli Warren and Von Beasley, you're seeing that gap start to shrink. At what point do you think, okay, position swap, let's let Eli lead for a couple of laps here, see if he's a bit uh, better of a leader than he is a follower uh, to try and work together even more and get make sure Reed Sweeney does not enter this fight for the win. I think, honestly, you need to do it right now. You need to you need to see what you have for your cards. You need to kind of lay them out between these two. 
And I think Eli right now definitely has the better hand. He needs to make sure that he can pull out. Now Vaughn might be able to draft with him. He might get stuck back there. I don't know if they're really working together, if there's just kind of some mutual understanding right now, but if Vaughn, if they're really working together, Vaughn can definitely hold up Reed. He's he's fast like we're seeing now, but I think Eli's just that little bit faster, and in these cars, that's what that's what matters. You got to get that little bit extra out of them while still keeping it underneath you. So I think they need to switch now if they're going to think about it. Um, if they're not, though, Reed Sweeney's going to be on them probably in the next... I'd say he probably has about two or three laps, but after that, if he can't get to him, it'll be it'll be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can see there as we ride on board with Eli Warren through 12 in the final couple of corners of the lap. Of course, Eli is going to uh, close that gap to Von Beasley out in front, just with the nature of Formula cars running very, very close together on long straightaways. You're always going to have that huge slipstream effect, and you're seeing that now. But even Eli going into braking zones and holding uh, pace around corners, he does seem like he has a little bit more than Von Beasley as they cross the line, uh, as they are halfway through this race, and it's just five laps remaining. Uh, looking at times again, 57.9 for Reed Sweeney, 58.1, so it wasn't as for Eli Warren, excuse me. So it's not as drastic as a gap gained by Reed Sweeney, but it's still time gained for him. He's 1.5 away from Von Beasley, and he's just one second away from Eli Warren, championship rival. Caleb Patry running in fourth at the moment. He's starting to fall back from this fight. Same with Max Krause, who rounds in the top five. As you can see, Patry there just out of shot. He's had pace at times, especially throughout qualifying in the opening couple of laps, which is throughout a long stint. Caleb unable to hold the pace of what these front runners are, but I don't know, I tell you what, if they start to battle, Caleb can make this a four-car battle for the lead as Eli, that gap is starting to come down. I know we've said it a lot, especially in this section uh, before, but Reed is really starting to reel these guys in, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He definitely wants this win. And he can see it right there. Like, you know, when you're a racing driver and you see that lead, you don't know what it is, but you know you go faster. You know you want that win. So he's definitely pushing right now. He wants he wants it. But, you know, these cars are hard to pass in. And they're also, you know, they're hard not to spin out in. They're, they're hard to push to the limit. So I think he's definitely taking it easy. And we know that Vaughn and Eli are definitely going, trying to, trying to build as much as they can. But I think Reed just has that little bit better better understanding a little bit more confidence in the car like you talked about in the pre-race um so it, it'll be fun to see when he gets to him well yeah he's closed up a lot i think this kind of back section of the area i think this is where that it helps them being in the draft yeah and it just looks like reed is just looking at his uh chase camera for us as they hit four to go it, he, it looks like he's able to just lean on that outside rear tire a little bit more something we talk about in carding all the time is if you're able to lean on that and really trust that outside rear you're going to be quick and he's able to do that in sim which is fairly difficult for a lot of drivers who when you are so used to that butt feel uh in the cart then you're not able to translate it into sim it's hard for some drivers to adapt and obviously reed sweeney doing a very very good job of that i don't know if he came from sim racing to carding or carding to sim racing so unsure on that but Whatever the case, he's closing the gap, and it's 1.2 seconds between him and Von Beasley out in front. He, you're starting to get to the gap where it's like, okay, you can start to feel the effects of slipstream down the front straight away, down kettle bottoms between the kink and uh, Canada Corner and a few other places. So with only four laps to go, and it'll be three at the line, Eli, Reed Sweeney, especially through here. Look how close he is now. He's just one second away from Von Beasley and six tenths away from Eli Warren. We have a battle on our hands for the lead in the final couple of laps in the final race of the season. This sure should be interesting. Oh, yeah, it definitely will be. We all know that they all want it, um, but Reed is closing in. Now, I wonder how much of this stuff he's using up. Ten lap race, these tires, not that durable. They can last you for a long time, but not at the pace Reed's going. So... As we say, catching someone is one thing, but when you have to pass them, it's a completely different. So it'll be interesting to see. We have these tight turns. We have these long straightaways. So it'll be fun to see where he can make his move because we know he's going to go for it. But it'll be fun to see where and how he makes his move. Oh, as he drops a tire there, he's really pushing now. Uh, he is within that draft, though, of Eli. So 
each lap he's just going to get a little bit closer. I have a feeling, though, with at least two laps to go, he'll probably make his move going down to turn five there. Yeah, and like we said, three laps to go, and I think... I mean, we're seeing a bit of a 206 race, are we not here, Eli? The front two could be battling. Uh, they could have been battling for this entire time, but they're deciding to stay out in front and try and decide it amongst themselves as this is going to come down to the final laps. This is uh, exactly what you would see in 206 Senior, 206 Junior, 206 Sportsman. Uh, it route in the real world karting, <coughs> excuse me, is Reed Sweeney. He's, he, he gained so, so much in the early parts of this lap. Did he, in this race, excuse me, did he not? He's kind of starting to stall out. He's slowly starting to get back into these front two of Von Beasley and Eli Warren, but I don't know. I mean, obviously, Eli is not going to want to come second here. He wants to win. And all it takes for Reed Sweeney to catch up to these guys is one attempted pass by Eli Warren, and this suddenly becomes a three-car battle for the lead as Reed Sweeney just seems so, so quick through turn eight. He always uh, gains so much time through there, does Reed Sweeney, as they make their way into Canada Corner. Now, Eli, it's going to be two laps to go in just a few moments here. Adam Kreppen is a bit out of this, but apart from these front three, if you had to pick one, I know it might have a bit of a commentator's curse situation here, but if you had to pick one, who are you going? Oh, I, I don't know. I feel like Eli, like you said, he was, he's being the most smart right now. He's uh, if he passes someone with, you know, three laps to go, two laps to go. All he's going to do is he's just going to make it more difficult for him to win this race versus him and Reed Sweeney. So I think I think he's being smart like that. Um, he's got this draft, you know. It's kind of nice, but he keeps poking that nose. As we see here, he's really close. I don't know if he's gonna, no, he's going to stay in line right now. He looks, he looks. No move just yet. So I think I think you're right. He's definitely just waiting, trying to maybe put that pressure on Vaughn. If he makes a mistake, then he can just go around, not have to use up his stuff. But two laps to go. Reed's catching up, but I don't know if he has enough anymore. Oh, as I say that, he's right. he's getting on that gearbox of uh, Eli Warren as they go down. They go down. Uh, it's long straight away towards turn five. I don't know. I don't know if Eli's going to want to go or if he's going to be okay just sitting here. But I, I'd definitely be taking... I think I'd be taking Reed Sweeney. How about you? Yeah, it's it's so difficult because if these guys start to battle, you have Caleb Patry right behind too, who you have to be thinking Caleb is sitting in fourth who's just been out of touching distance of these guys so far as Reed Sweeney has a bit of a moment there on the apex with controlling the rear end of that. Caleb in fourth is pulling out, just pleading to these guys to start battling to bring him into this as they make their way into turn eight. This is a really good corner for Reed Sweeney. Uh, is he always, always, always gains a little bit on Eli Warren. As we talked about earlier, the differences of how Von Beasley and Eli Warren take this carousel, where Warren seems to be able to uh, get a lot more speed on exit compared to Von Beasley, just diamonding it and getting in the corner. So that's we could see that fall into strategy coming through kettle bottoms for the final time next time around. Excuse me. But... Eli Warren, he's right there, and Von Beasley losing the rear end just a little bit. This is the battle we've wanted to see all season. On the final lap of the season, on the final feature race, Reed Sweeney is there on Von Beasley. One lap to go. Eli Warren behind, then Reed Sweeney. White flag in the air this time by for the leaders. They're going to white line it to the start-finish line. It's going to be Von Beasley still out in front. No one's making their moves just yet. Eli Warren not able to get a run out of turn one. Reed Sweeney still there as well. Von Beasley able to get a good exit out of turn one and turn two. Caleb Patry, you can see there, just out of sight, really out of this battle. Again, white lining it into turn four and five. Von Beasley has a gap as Eli Warren falling under pressure to, uh, that's Reed Sweeney in third, out of turn five and up into turn six they go. They have about half a track once they pass this apex to try and get things done. If you're Eli Warren and Reed Sweeney, just half a lap to go to try and steal this away from Von Beasley who's been so, so quick. He has a four-tenth gap 
to Eli Warren. And you have to think, if you're Reed Sweeney, you have to go now, but it's going to be difficult to get it done. There's really only one passing opportunity, and that is turn 12 on the rest of this lap to try and get past as Eli Warren is holding up Reed Sweeney quite well. Von Beasley might have this. He just really needs to nail breaking into turn 12 into Canada Corner to get it done. But battle for a second. Here comes Reed Sweeney on Eli Warren, trying it around the outside. Eli Warren's going to outbreak him there. Sweeney might try the over under, unable to do that. But Von Beasley, just two more corners to go now to try and get his first and only win. Uh, feature win of the season. The two behind them are continuing the battle, but for the final time this season, the winner of the Road America round will go the way of Von Beasley. He'll take the win. Eli Warren and Reed Sweeney are battling to the line. The two championship contenders at the line. It's Eli Warren who takes second. Reed Sweeney who comes in third. And looking at points unofficially, Reed Sweeney will be, again, unofficially your champion for the 2024 Route 66 Sim Championship. So congrats to him. Didn't get the win today. Didn't have the luck, really, in that pre-final. But what a race for him. Caleb Patriot coming in fourth. Max Krause able to hold on in fifth. And Adam Kreppen, Carson Sauter, Luke Powers, Braden Rudder, and Quinta McPherson, who you can see there <laughs> just crashing across the line there. Uh, coming in 10th. Eli, how about that for a final lap battle to finish off the season? Oh, yeah, that was good. You're hoping for a little bit more, but I think Eli fell off a little bit. He used a little bit too much tire. Uh, but that was cool. That was cool to see Von win. Uh, yeah, but that was, that was fun to watch Reed Sweeney. That was, that was overall uh, a fun finish there. Yeah, more battling on track at the moment. This is Cadence Presley and Charlie Steins battling it out for 13th. The racing isn't done just yet for the Sim Championship. One more corner to go for these guys. Presley late on the break. Steins has another lag out for him as he's blinking a little bit. We're going to see a drag race to the line up the hill. Steins looks like he might get this. It's only for 13th, but how about this for racing? To the line, Charlie Steins is going to take it and hold off Cadence Presley, who had race-winning potential tonight. So, unfortunate for the both of them, who are very, very quick uh, throughout tonight. But how about that? Eli has, will be uh, taking to a commercial break here in just a second before we talk to a couple of our top finishers from the night. So welcome back, everyone, to the final round of the Route 66 Sim Championship. There you can see Von Beasley, the driver who led every lap and won the race uh, and the pre-final for here at Road America. was the star of the show. Von Beasley taking the win over Eli Warren, Reed Sweeney, Caleb Patry, and Max Krause, your top five. Adam Kreppen finishing just outside in sixth. 
You have Carson Sauter, Luke Powers, Braden Rudder, and Quentin McPherson, your top 10. Outside the top 10, Shane Reddy, Daniel Dragunov, Charlie Steins, Cadence Presley, Jordan Bachmeyer, Nathan Trapp, Christopher Yotze, Austin Fairfield, your 18 drivers from tonight. A uh, big mover, though. Uh, Carson Sauter making up 10 spots for him, uh, finishing up 7th. Uh, good race for him. Same with Reed Sweeney making up 7 spots. His, uh, we'll try and get a couple of the top finishers from tonight in here to talk. We will start Thank you. Uh, with Reed Sweeney. Really quick, sorry for pulling you there, Reed. But Reed, uh, I believe, uh, looking at points, that makes you unofficially the champion of the first inaugural 2024 uh, Route 66 Sim Championship. But talking about your races, it was an unlucky pre-final for you tonight. Got in the wreck with Cadence and a few other drivers in turn eight. Had to do it the hard way in the final, making your way from 10th all the way up to that lead pack. Just walk us through uh, how that final race went for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I just knew I, I almost kind of wanted to be aggressive on the start just because I didn't want to get kind of caught up in some incidents that, you know, might have happened in the back of the pack. So I wanted to get up uh, near the front as soon as possible. And, um, yeah, once I got up there, I noticed I was kind of, I was running them down slowly, Eli and, uh, and Vaughn. And, um, so I just knew I had to be patient. And then when I got up behind them, you know, I didn't really know exactly how the points played out, but I had kind of a decent lead going into the race. So I just wanted to be smart. So I didn't, didn't really want to make any super aggressive moves. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it was You've been very, very consistent throughout this season and uh, unfortunate that you had to start from 10th there and wasn't able to stay in that lead battle the entire race, but making your way into it in the final couple of laps definitely gave us uh, a good show. So we'll leave you for the night. Uh, thank you for running with us in the Sim Championship season. Congrats on the unofficial championship. Uh, we'll get points out on our social media in a couple of day's time but we'll let you go congrats on the top three finish and we'll hopefully see you at uh, newcastle or some other route 66 sprint series race throughout this season thank you guys thanks for uh for uh putting on the show yeah so we will let uh reed go on with his night bringing in eli warren who worked very very closely with Von Beasley throughout tonight and especially in that final Eli uh the other Eli in the comms booth with me were talking about how much you two were working together being Von Beasley who ended up winning just walk us uh through your strategy a little bit for that final to try your guys's best it seemed like to make it only a two car battle for the lead yeah I mean I knew um wait well, first off could you guys hear me Yes, we can hear you. Yes. All right. So I knew that, I mean, the field was kind of shuffled up, like, after that lap one wreck in the pre-final. So, I mean, I was, me and Vaughn were one, too. So I knew that going into the final, we had a plan that we were just kind of trying to push away. And on the first lap, we tried to have Charlie kind of hold everybody up. And, I mean, he, he did a pretty good job at that. You know, I think we, he got us to have a three-second gap. But then, I mean, Reed was just so fast. He was, like, half a second faster than us. And so, I mean, he just... I just stayed behind Vaughn and like we knew he was going to be there eventually and then like lap six or seven he kind of got to us and then he just kind of stayed within like six or seven tenths of me and then there was one time where he just got my draft on the straightaway and I, I mean I told Vaughn I was like you just have to go low I won't try to pass you I'm just going to try to hold him up as much as I can and not like do anything crazy and I knew that if I, was, I mean, I was kind of trying to get Vaughn to get away from us, but the draft is just so strong that you just stay with them. And so the last lap, I mean, I just told Vaughn, just stay low. I won't dive bomb you. I'll just kind of stay in the middle. I'll make sure that Reed can't, you know, get a big draft of us and make a dive bomb and make a pass. And then, I mean, I, we we did almost the whole last lap, and I, I was kind of still there. So, I mean, I tried to get a run in the last corner on Vaughn, but... I couldn't get anything, but I'm just, I'm happy for Vaughn. You know, he's kind of, I think he's sick right now. So to, to get a win while you're sick is pretty cool. And then, I mean, Reed won the championship. He deserves it. He was way faster than me this race. So I'm just, I mean, it was just a good race. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, 
in the comms box, we were talking a little bit. It seemed like the battle you guys were, or the race you guys were having, was a lot like you would see in like a 206 senior race with you two. Uh, towards the latter half of that race, if you guys were to battle, Reed would have been there in a couple of corners time, but it was uh, obviously a really smart strategy move from you two going into uh, this final just to work with each other. Uh, we know you and Vaughn are very close friends. Was this something you guys had talked about uh, before the event, or is this something you came up on the fly uh, in the latter parts of the pre-final or the final? I mean, we just came up with it on the fly, like during the pre-final. Like we, I mean, we practiced together a ton, and we like raced really hard in practice. But we've we talked about what we would do in a situation like that. But we've like we've never really had a situation like that. So we just we kind of knew what to do. We know how each other race pretty well. So I mean, it just kind of worked together pretty good. I just stayed behind him. I mean, he's he's always very fast. So I knew that we wouldn't have to worry about that. And you know, I knew if we started to race, like if I tried to over under him or dive bomb him, then Reed would be right there. And you never know, he could have a big draft and just make it three wide on the straightaway and he's bias. And it, honestly, he could probably would have pulled away from us. So, I mean, I just knew it's, it was kind of like a 206 race. You just couldn't do anything too stupid. You just had to keep everyone kind of close together. And if you if you fought a ton, then someone would have gotten away. So I knew I had to treat it like a 206 race in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, congrats on the top three finish. Thanks for coming to talk with us. And thanks for racing the Sim Championship season. I don't think you're running a full... Uh, Route 66 campaign with us, but I believe you're coming to Newcastle Motorsports Park. But uh, whatever race you do come to, if you do come to race with us in the karting side of things, we're looking forward to seeing you again. We'll let you get on with your night. Congrats again on the top three performance there for you, Eli. All right, thank you. All right, that is Eli Warren. One more <coughs> interview to go, and that is the race winner himself, Von Beasley, who from what Eli said, is feeling a bit under the weather. So, Vaughn, how'd that race go? And more importantly, how are you feeling? Um, it, oh, my God. Okay. <clears throat> so, it was it was a... F okay, hold on. <clears throat> yeah, so you heard from Eli. I'm not feeling the greatest. It's basically just the Jordan flu game right now. That's what this is all about. But, I mean, it was really, it was a really fun race. Um, I mean, I just knew that uh, Reed had all the pace in the world. Um, we were qualifying. He's at that point five lap. I'm like, oh, damn. Okay, we got a good guy on our hands. So um, I, I just knew that um, once we got kind of sort of through the pre final a little bit, that Eli and I are just going to have to work together before they got back to us. Um, but I mean, it was, it was a really fun race. I mean, most of the time was just trying to, just coughing the whole time with the call, which is kind of funny, but it was a fun one for sure. Yeah, and obviously, congrats on that win. You've been uh, up there or thereabouts for the races you've run with us this season. We'll let you go. Won't talk with you a bit too much. Let you get some uh, rest on that voice. So uh, congrats, Vaughn. Congrats on the new set of MG Red SH2s that go along with that. And uh, enjoy your night. Get a little bit of sleep. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, that is Vaughn Beasley. And that is your top three from the final race of the season. Eli, uh, closing thoughts from that one at Road America. How about it? Oh, yeah. I uh, sadly missed the, the pre-final um, just because of some uh, technical difficulties, which sucks. But, yeah, it sounds like there was an inter uh, interesting wreck. But this uh, this race just kind of showed that this this championship's fun, especially when you when you put in some effort, put in some time, and you, uh, you have some good, clean drivers. It, it can be fun to watch. Um the races are a pretty good length, so it's been fun all season. Uh, this race just kind of showed there's a lot of aspects you got to look at over a race. So, yeah, it's just one word to sum it all. Sum it all up is probably uh, uh, I'd probably I'd probably go with exciting. Yeah, you have to, don't you? Um, it definitely was an exciting season for us. Our first little venture into the virtual world of racing. So. To the drivers that raced with us, I believe we had about 60, 65 different drivers that ran this season. So uh, thank you all for spending your Thursday nights with us. We're going to wrap it up on the inaugural Route 66 Sim Championship here at the finale race 
at Virtual Road America. For myself and Eli Carter in the comms for Taylor Burris and Grid Vision for doing everything with the broadcast and on the back end, do us a favor by doing them a favor and go and subscribe if you liked what you saw. They have a ton more uh, iRacing broadcasting content and it's very, very fun to watch, so be sure to go and hit the subscribe button for them. But again, for us and the Route 66 Sprint Series, that was the inaugural Sim Championship for 2024. Maybe we'll see you again in 2025. But until Newcastle Motorsports Park for round one of the Route 66 Sprint Series, bye for now.